Hi to you alumni and friends. Thanks for joining us today for Zoom Like a Pro. I'm Jenna Mills, the Director of Alumni Engagement Programs and a proud 2009 and 2016 graduate of Towson University. Before I introduce our speaker, I want to share a few housekeeping notes. Attendees will remain muted throughout the webinar. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature in your meeting toolbar. We will be monitoring the Q&A throughout the session and we'll take additional questions at the end of the presentation. I'd now like to introduce Dane Hauser, a 2009 TU graduate. Dane is a customer success manager team lead at Zoom. He began his career in healthcare as an electronic health record analyst and consultant. In his current role with Zoom, Dane assists Zoom customers in many different industries, but has a focus in healthcare and tele telehealth. Joining Dane to assist the Q&A is Josh Stein, also a 2009 graduate and Zoom customer success manager. A quick fun fact, Dane and Josh met each other at TU where they played on the TU Roll Club roller hockey team. Thank you, Dane, for leading today's presentation. Great, thanks, Jenna. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, as Jenna mentioned, my name is Dane Hauser, and uh, today we're going to be covering, covering the following items. Um, this is a pretty packed agenda. Uh, I know there's probably a lot of good information here and a lot of good nuggets we'll take home with you. Um, but we'll also be uh, taking Q&A during the session. Um, as Jenna mentioned, Josh will be able to assist us with some of those questions. So as they come up throughout the session, feel free to put them into the Q&A. Uh, that will give you the ability to, to get some answers uh, to your questions during the session. And then after the session, if there is time, uh, we'll open it up again to some more questions. But uh, like I said, our agenda is pretty full today. So with that, we will get started. So first, we're going to launch a poll. Uh, there's going to be a couple of polls throughout today's session. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, about uh, the, the first university mascot uh, of TU. So I'm going to launch this poll now and go ahead and vote on what you think our first mascot was. Awesome. We have about half of the folks who have voted thus far. All right, lots of folks thinking the tiger and the golden knight. A couple folks thinking the teachers. We have about 80% uh, of the votes in. I'll give you about another 10 seconds to get your votes in. Uh, if you haven't voted yet, get those votes in. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll provide the final answer here in a moment. All right, so I'm gonna end the poll now uh, and we're gonna show you what those results are. So, uh, 41% of you thought that the Golden Knight uh, was the first official university mascot. It in fact was. Uh, so the, the Golden Knight was the official first uh, mascot of Towson. Um, the Tiger uh, became uh, the, the uh, mascot later on and the teachers, a uh, good guess, even though Zoom or even though Towson was a teaching school, uh, that is, uh, but that was not the, uh, the, the correct answer. Great, uh, so that was our first poll. Um, we're gonna stop sharing that. And we'll, there'll be another poll here uh, as we move along. Uh, so next we're going to jump into some more information about Zoom. So uh, what is Zoom? Zoom is a communications platform. Uh, we have many different offerings. There is a meetings platform that you are likely familiar with. We offer uh, in-meeting chat as well as a persistent chat through the Zoom desktop application and mobile application. We offer webinar. We have Zoom rooms, which are software-based conference rooms. So when you are back in the office uh, or back on campus, uh, Zoom rooms would be essentially the video-enabled room, uh, physical room that you would, you would be in. And that includes things like digital signage, which is pretty cool. Uh, we also support legacy endpoints, Cisco Polycom endpoints. And then we also have a Zoom for Developers page. Uh, our marketplace at marketplace.zoom.us is where you can find lots of really cool integrations that work very well with Zoom integrations for things like Microsoft Teams, integrations for uh, calendaring systems like Calendly and, and other things uh, like electronic medical record systems like Epic. Uh, and again, it's more than just meetings. Uh, there's a ton that you can do with Zoom. Uh, so if you can learn the tools, uh, you can likely uh, make your webinar or meeting successful uh, or event even uh, more so even these days. Great, let's jump into the desktop application. So the desktop application is one place where you can download Zoom. You can go to our download page at zoom.us slash download. Here's where you can download the client for meetings. This is also referred to as the client. Uh, it's essentially an application that runs on your computer that helps Zoom uh, function. This is what the sign-in screens will look like. You don't need a Zoom account 
to join a Zoom meeting. But if you are hosting a Zoom meeting, uh, you need at least a basic account, which is a free account that anyone can go and sign up for. You may already have one of these, or you can also sign up for one of our paid accounts, which provides you additional access and capabilities uh, within Zoom. The home screen of the desktop application looks something similar to the one seen here. Uh, on the left, you have a couple of big buttons that give you quick access to starting an instant meeting, a meeting that is not scheduled. You can join a meeting by typing in a meeting ID manually. You can schedule a meeting here from the desktop application. Uh, we also have plugins uh, and, add, and an add-in for Microsoft Outlook. If you're a Google user, we have a Chrome extension that you can download, and we also have a Chrome add-on. Uh, that all work when scheduling Zoom meetings. So that download page will include more information about those scheduling tools, uh, but you can also schedule here from the desktop application. This screen sharing option is actually for Zoom rooms. It allows you to instantly share into a Zoom room wirelessly, which is really cool. We will talk a little bit more about screen sharing in the session. You can integrate your calendar with Zoom so that when you're in the Zoom desktop application, you can see if you have time blocked off, uh, or if you are, uh, have been invited to a Zoom meeting, you can quickly join that from here on this homepage. Up here in the top right, we have our profile picture, and this is where we can upload, um, or this is where we can access certain settings about our account, as well as check for updates, new versions of Zoom. And then this little settings cog will give us the ability to access our general settings on our desktop application. So this is where we can configure some um, settings that we want to be applied when we are in a meeting, things like asking uh, to confirm when you leave a meeting. So if you click that button by accident, you're not exited from the meeting or webinar. This also includes video preferences. So being able to mirror your video, which makes being on video seem a little bit more natural, testing out your video ahead of time, making sure it looks good, make sure, making sure that you have the right backgrounds um, and everything looks uh, good to go before you actually jump into that meeting or webinar. The uh, touch up my appearance option is a popular one. This one is something that will soften your video feed and give you a little support if you've had a late night or early morning. Uh, there's also the ability to turn off your video when joining a meeting. So if you don't wanna be on video immediately upon joining a meeting, you can have that set to off. I'm on video 99% of the time, but I still use this setting because it gives me the flexibility to choose when I'm on video. So lots of good options out here that I definitely recommend checking out. Uh, most of these settings are set them and forget them type of settings. So you're not going to end up, you know, having to come out here too often. Uh, but these are some settings that are definitely good to familiarize yourself with so that you can personalize Zoom to be uh, the best experience for you. Uh, this audio option gives you the ability to test out your inputs and outputs. So your audio, speaker, and microphone. This, was, this is going to be, uh, it's going to apply for both meetings and webinars. So regardless of whether you're hosting or you're joining uh, or it's a meeting or a webinar, all of these audio video settings are gonna be uh, applied to both. Joining computer audio is a really easy, quick way to join a meeting over audio. So no need to, no need to dial in anymore, no need to call your phone from the computer. Uh, you can just join into the computer audio using the speakers on your computer, uh, a pair of headphones if you have them. Uh, they don't have to be anything fancy like uh, AirPods. They can just be a pair of headphones that come with your smartphone. Uh, but however you're, you're, you're connecting into the audio, uh, it's recommended you use your computer audio. Muting your microphone when joining a meeting. Uh, this is something that you can do automatically just like turning off your video. Another helpful feature to be aware of. Uh, again, there's gonna be a lot of settings we run through, but uh, the keys here are just kind of knowing where the video can be adjusted and where the audio can be adjusted. Once you're out here, the settings are pretty straightforward. This next one is a pretty cool feature. Uh, this allows you to hold down the space bar uh, and be temporarily unmuted if you are previously muted. So a push to talk option by holding down the space bar. So check that one out as well. Virtual backgrounds, these are fun. Uh, this is something that I'm using now. I actually have a green screen behind me. Uh, it makes for the virtual background to be a nicer, kind of more uh, clear, crisp experience when using one. Uh, but you don't need a virtual, or you don't need a green screen to leverage a virtual background. Uh, if your computer supports it, and we have some pretty good documentation on our support page about this, uh, you can actually uh, have, your camera and use have Zoom key you out and put that virtual background behind you. This also works on your mobile device if you're on, on a smartphone, I believe uh, at least on iOS and, and potentially on Android as well. So again, we support not needing a green screen or uh, if you do have a green screen or a solid background, 
uh, that would allow you to, to throw up one of these virtual backgrounds. And you also have the ability to add a virtual background. So this could be a static image. And we now support video virtual backgrounds like you see here with the Aurora Borealis behind me. Mobile applications, uh, they can be obtained from their respective app stores. So Zoom Cloud Meetings is what you're looking for, whether you're in uh, 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 the App Store for iOS or the Google Play Store for Android. And once you have that installed, you're going to see similar prompts on the right hand, on the left hand side here to what you would see if you were joining from the desktop application. Very similar layout here as well, seeing meetings that are upcoming, seeing that chat that you have out here. This is the, uh, the, in, the, uh, the instant messaging platform that Zoom offers, joining a meeting and then upcoming meetings as well. Um, I really personally like the mobile application because I can host a meeting entirely from my mobile device. That includes muting people, uh, unmuting people, sharing content. If content is being shared with me, I can actually annotate on that content on my mobile device. Uh, so it is a fully featured, very, very rich application that I definitely recommend uh, downloading if possible. This is also just a nice quick way you can connect with your family, uh, kind of similar to a, a FaceTime app. Uh, but this is a great way to have Zoom with you on the go. Um, also be aware that there are some settings associated with the mobile application that are different than what you have in your uh, desktop application. All right, let's pause for another poll here. So the next poll uh, is going to be kind of referring to uh, how many names has Towson had since opening in 1866? So I'm going to launch that poll now. Go ahead and get your votes in. Uh, there are now 91 of us, or 95 of us in the session, uh, and uh, looks like the votes are coming in quickly. Lots of people voting for three. We're about 20 seconds in here. Give everybody another uh, 10 seconds from now. Great, we have almost 80% of the votes in. That's great. All right, so we have uh, just under 80% of the votes in. Uh, we're at 40 seconds here, so we'll, uh, we'll end the poll. And uh, most of you thought that there were three previous names uh, for Towson. Uh, to you, uh, there were actually five, five uh, previous names since opening in 1866. Uh, I don't know all of those names, maybe Jenna or Chandler do, but um, that is a pretty neat fact about uh, Towson. All right. So back to the presentation here, uh, the Zoom web portal. So the Zoom web portal uh, kind of goes hand in hand with the features and, and setup for your uh, Zoom account, as well as any settings you want applied to your meetings or your webinars. So the Zoom web portal can be accessed by going to zoom.us slash sign in. And once you've reached that zoom.us slash sign in page, you can create an account if you don't already have one. And if you do have an account, you can sign in. And upon logging in, you can see uh, a section up here that says personal and it gives you profile options. This is gonna be a place where you can upload a profile picture. You can customize personal meeting ID. That's a static ID that you can use to share out with uh, your friends and family. It also tells you more information about your account. Out here, we also have settings. Uh, these settings are where you can go and say, I wanna use polling in my meetings, or I want to use uh, a co-host option that allows you to have somebody assist you with running your session. Uh, there's lots of cool features out here that you can turn on or off. Uh, but basically, this is where you're going to want to go just maybe once or twice to, once, uh, to get it figured out uh, as to what features you like and have in your meetings, um, annotation tools, things of that nature. So familiarize yourself with these settings. They're toggles, so on and off. Um, all of these settings are toggled off at the moment. And then these settings will be toggled on. I need to have these settings enabled prior to my next meeting if I want to leverage those options. All right, so uh, what is uh, the, the difference between a Zoom webinar or a Zoom meeting? Well, uh, there's a couple of key differences here. Um, this screenshot provides you uh, just some, some 
when to use Zoom webinar and when to use Zoom meeting. Uh, but the article, actually that link down there at the bottom, uh, I believe uh, someone will share that with you in the chat, will give you a really good breakdown of when to use webinar and when to use meeting. But in general, um, when you're content sharing in a webinar, uh, the panelists, so the people with elevated access, are the only folks who can share their content. Whereas in a Zoom meeting, which is a collaborative environment, uh, all participants can share their screen. Uh, the host does control who has that capability, but in general, uh, all participants can share their screen. Audio, panelists only. So again, those level, those elevated um, uh, participants, those panelists are the only folks who can share their audio and video in a webinar. But in a meeting, everyone can share their audio and video if they choose to. Again, the host has control over that, but uh, you can turn on your audio and video in the meeting if you are a participant. Webinars are best used for keynotes, product announcements, educational webinars like the one that we're in today, all hands events. Um, this is a really good way to get uh, a couple of presenters uh, on video and on audio, be able to share their screen and to broadcast that out to a large group of individuals. Now those, those individuals will be in kind of a role as an attendee like yourself where they're really in a listen only, view only mode. They don't have any interaction with each other and they're really just consuming the content that you're presenting to them. Um, now we do have the example of the Q&A and uh, the, 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 uh, the other options for managing attendees and panelists. We'll get to that in a little bit, but in just a high level, um, attendees are in listen only. Now in, in Zoom meetings, uh, this is for everyday meetings. So meeting with your, your family, uh, meeting with uh, a business partner, sharing a presentation uh, to a small group. Uh, this is a fully interactive collaborative environment between all participants. So what's hosting a meeting look like? So hosting a meeting, uh, when you join that meeting, you'll be prompted as to how you wanna join audio. Everybody in the meeting will be prompted how they wanna join audio. Uh, again, the recommendation is joining with computer audio, and if you wanna join automatically, meaning you don't have to take any additional steps to connect in the future, you could check this box down here. There's also phone call options. You may or may not have toll-free available depending on the type of account that you have. And then same thing with Call Me. Call Me is also a premium audio feature that can be purchased uh, separately from your meeting license, but this allows you to call yourself from the meeting or call somebody else if you'd like to. So in meeting controls uh, look like this. Uh, we have the view here, which is called active speaker view, where the person speaking is actively displayed in the foreground. The rest of the participants are in a film reel at the top. So this is one view that we have. We'll get to gallery view in a minute, which is kind of the Hollywood squares, Brady Bunch uh, grid view um, that, that, you're, that you're likely uh, familiar with if you've met with uh, multiple people before on Zoom. Down here in the bottom left is where you control your audio and video. Uh, this is limited in a webinar because again, you're not on audio or video necessarily if you're an attendee, only if you're a panelist. And then these options have up carrots in a meeting that allow you to select your inputs and outputs to test out that speaker and microphone if you want. And then same thing with video. This is where I would change my camera from one camera to another. So say I have a, a camera on my laptop, but I wanna use a, a better, higher definition camera uh, that's connected to my computer. This is where I can select that. Choosing a virtual background. This is where I can leverage the new virtual background and, or I can switch virtual backgrounds if I want to. Up here in the top left, we've added a little information icon. This gives you your meeting ID, tells you who the host is, gives you the invitation URL, and it also includes your participant ID. The participant ID is important for those of you who have dialed into the meeting, uh, who need to connect your phone to your computer. Um, the benefit of connecting your phone to your computer is that you will be able to mute and unmute yourself in the Zoom meeting uh, down here in the bottom left-hand corner. This icon, if you pair the phone and the computer together using the participant ID, it will actually show a little phone icon and allow you to toggle the meeting and unmuting. So gallery view uh, is going to be this option up here. We can, uh, when we click gallery view, it'll take us to this grid view uh, that I referenced before. This is where you can see 25 and up to 49 video feeds all in one window. Uh, so that 49 video feeds does require an additional setting in your desktop application. But again, this is a really cool way to see your entire team, to see your entire family, um, to see everybody in that, in that, that grid view, which is, is really neat. 
participant management. So participants can be accessed from the bottom toolbar. Um, participant management is a little different in a meeting than it is in a webinar. Again, because we're not really, uh, ha we don't really have attendees. We, ha we have participants and they're kind of on an equal playing field uh, aside from the host. And when I hover over someone in the participant list, notice that I can mute or unmute that person as the host. I can chat with them. I can take additional actions here if I want. I can make someone a co-host who can assist me with running my meeting. So there's lots of cool functionality here by just hovering over people in the participant list. This would also apply to gallery view. So if you were in that previous grid view and I hovered over somebody, I could take all of these actions over on that person as well. Down here at the bottom, we have inviting. So inviting someone to join your meeting, muting everyone. This is a really important feature for not only meetings, but also for webinars. This will allow you to mute all participants in your session without muting yourself. So the person who clicks this button will not be muted. Uh, everybody else will. And the benefit of that is you can reduce all the background noise without worrying about who is unmuted, right? So mute all is a really great feature. Uh, mute all also turns on mute participants upon entry. So not only are the people in my meeting muted, but also people that are coming into my meeting after I click that button, will they'll be muted as well. Now under this more option, we get some additional capabilities like locking our meeting. So say we have, uh, we're having a very important meeting and we don't want anybody else to join. Uh, even if they, we, we've shared the link with them, we don't want them to join, we can lock the meeting and prevent anybody else from joining. You can leave the meeting, uh, but no one else would be able to join that meeting. So lock meeting is a really nice feature. There's also the ability to leverage what's called a waiting room. And I'll show you what that looks like here in, in a couple of slides. The waiting room is a great way to kind of stage people, uh, similar to in a webinar where they can't see each other, uh, they can't communicate. Um, and this is where you can kind of hold them until you've uh, vetted that they are who they are, and then you can admit them into the, to the, the main meeting. So here's that waiting room option. When you're in the waiting room as an attendee uh, or as a participant, you'll see this option. This can actually be customized in your web portal. So if you go back out to the web portal, you can put up a logo here. You can put up a, bleed, uh, a brief um, line of text if you want to. You can test out your computer uh, microphone and speakers down at the bottom. And then over here on the right-hand side, you see the host view. So the host view, shows you who's in the waiting room. And if I click see waiting room, I'm uh, given the ability to admit people. I can admit everyone all at once if I want to, or I can admit, in, admit individuals if needed. And then notice here, I can still see the other people who are currently in the session. This message option will allow me to send a message to everyone in the waiting room. We don't have the ability just yet to message an individual, but you can, uh, broadcast a message to everyone in the waiting room if you want, which is pretty neat. So waiting room, uh, in addition to passwords, uh, will help protect your meetings. Um, locking the meeting is, a, is that, that additional capability. Next up, sharing your screen and your content. This is gonna be, this is gonna be the same as it would be in a webinar as well. So some of these settings will overlap between meetings and webinars. Um, the settings and, and the, the look and feel of the webinar and the meeting are gonna be very similar, um, which is great because once you've uh, familiarized yourself with the meetings platform, it should be very easy for you to familiarize yourself with the webinar platform. So I click the share button and what I'm, brought, uh, what I'm presented with are the options to share different parts of my screen. So I can share my entire desktop if I wanted to. So if I was on a laptop, that would be everything on that screen. If I had multiple monitors, I could share multiple desktops if I wanted. Down here, we see the individual applications that are up and active on my computer. But maybe there's a PowerPoint that I wanna share. Just need to make sure that's open and active, and then I would select that option to share that. If I wanna share video in a meeting with audio, say like a YouTube video or just a file that's on your desktop, you can do that in Zoom. Just make sure you check these boxes. These boxes are gonna tell Zoom, hey, this is a video with audio that I wanna play through the meeting to my participants. So this is a really nice way to be able to present something to them in a video format through the meeting experience through the screen share option. So that process would be select the content you wanna share, make sure you check both of these boxes and then click the share button to do that. Zoom also supports sharing on mobile. 
uh, which is really nice. We have advanced sharing capabilities, so content from a second camera if you wanted to, a portion of your screen, or if you wanted to play some sound when people were coming in uh, to the meeting and you were just waiting, you could do that as well. We all also can share from uh, various file repositories uh, in the cloud. All right, this screen is a little busy, uh, but basically once I've begun sharing, uh, what you will see is that your toolbar moves to the top of your screen. And once it's done that, you actually have a couple of different capabilities. So we have the ability to change to a new share if we want. This means that I don't have to stop my share before going to another screen share. I just click new share, and then I can seamlessly transition between my PowerPoint and my Excel document, my email, and my uh, presentation if I want to. Pause share is pretty nice. It'll actually freeze the screen for the participants and allow me to kind of in the background figure out what slide I need to be on. So if a question was asked, I need to jump back a couple of slides. This is how I can do that. Annotation tools. Uh, these are really cool. These are for the host and for participants of a meeting. You can use a spotlight tool like the one I'm using here. There are also drawing tools so I can annotate on the screen if I need to. Um, this is a, a great way to be collaborative in a meeting. If someone is driving and they're, they're or not driving, but if someone is uh, uh, sharing their screen and I want to kind of point them to a portion of their screen, I can use the drawing tools. There's also an arrow tool that I can use as well. So these are great uh, collaborative functionality for you and your participants. Now, keep in mind that, uh, again, as the host, you have full control over your meeting. So under the more option, if you want to disable attendee annotation, you can. Uh, you can uh, make adjustments here. Uh, under the more option. So anything that you had seen in the toolbar previously, like chat uh, that might have disappeared, will now be under this more button. All right, let's open it up for another poll. So this is our third poll, uh, and this is going to be a uh, poll that is gonna be uh, asking you what uh, movie should be featured at the Netflix party virtual event on May 29th. So this is gonna be a, a cool alumni hosted event um, hosted on the on May 29th and we want to get some of your feedback as to what you think might be a cool movie to watch uh, during that party. So here I'm going to launch this poll to you. Go ahead and get your votes in now. Awesome we have more than half the, the participants voting. Ferris Bueller's day off is in the lead here. Give you 10 more seconds to get your votes in. Let's see if we can get the 80% voted this time. All right. All right, I'm gonna close the poll here. So it looks like Ferris Bueller's day off. Uh, just ousted uh, Back to the Future by, by a couple of votes uh, and about 7% of the vote here. So uh, Ferris Bueller day, Bueller's day off it is. Cool, thanks for everybody's participation in that poll. And we're about halfway through the webinar uh, at this point and we're gonna be talking about webinar specifically. Uh, so let's jump into it. So webinar provides you, again, the ability to uh, have a small select few be on video and audio uh, with screen sharing capabilities. Webinar also provides you Q&A and polling uh, in addition to some other uh, functionality. Uh, this is the panelist view. So this is what you would see if you had that elevated level of access uh, like the team here does today. Very similar to a meeting as, as you would expect. Uh, so the UI is very similar. Uh, in that way, which is great because it's, it's easy to familiarize yourself with. So the panelists uh, and the attendees are shown under the participants list, very similar to a meeting. Um, instead of having uh, just one type of uh, participant in, in a meeting, we in the webinar have panelists and attendees. Again, panelists are the elevated access. So I can see all my panelists here. I can see if they're on video. I can control if they're on video or not. I can make them a co-host if I need them to assist me with running my webinar. I can demote this person to an attendee if I need to. So if I need to, to push them back down to the attendee um, uh, view, I can do that. 
I can mute this person if I needed to. And then similarly, we have invite, mute all, uh, and the more options. And the benefit of having those options there is that uh, we can control our meeting just as we could, or we can control our webinar just as we could a meeting. The attendees list is going to look something similar to what, you've see, what you see here. Um, again, there's not an option for audio and video um, by default, but I can hover over an individual in my webinar and I can allow someone to talk. So if you've connected to computer audio, I can give you the ability to unmute yourself. Uh, this is a way you could take live Q&A in your session if you wanted to. So allowing Emma Frost to talk, this would give her the ability to unmute herself and then be able to speak if she wanted to in that webinar. But again, attendees don't have that capability by, by default. I can chat with this person directly. I can also promote them to panelists. So for some reason, the, this person maybe didn't receive their panelist invitation, uh, which would identify them uniquely as a panelist uh, in the webinar. Uh, they come in as an attendee by accident. That's okay. I can pull them up to uh, a panelist if I want to. This is also where I can rename somebody if I need to and then I can remove an attendee as well. Um, if hands have been raised, uh, if you're taking Q&A in that fashion, uh, you can lower all hands or um, the attendees will actually be resituated based on how, uh, based on chronologically who raised their hand first. So if Emma raised her hand first, she'd be listed at the top and then Remy and then Henry, if that was the chronological order that they raised their hands in. So you can make, always be sure that you're working from the top down and that it's fair and uh, based on who has raised their hand first. So uh, back to the panelist list, here's that more option that we had referred to earlier. Uh, there's a number of additional options in here and this is gonna, where you're gonna uh, really kind of hone your, your webinar um, features. Uh, so again, things like playing an inner exit chime, just like we saw in the, the meeting experience, that could be helpful. Maybe you wanna hear who's joining your meeting and who's joining your webinar. Maybe you wanna lock the webinar. Maybe you have the quorum that you want and you don't want anybody else to join. You can lock the webinar if you want. I can disable the ability for uh, the panelists to unmute themselves. So even though they have the elevated access, again, as the host, I still have that control. I also can control whether they're on video or not. So I can disable their video uh, or stop their video and, and I could uh, prevent them from turning that video on. Raise hand option can be toggled on or off. I have it turned off for today. We're gonna to be using the Q&A today. So uh, that is why you don't see the raised hand option uh, in today's session. And then there's also the ability for you to control as the host, what the attendee layout is. So as an attendee, you see a specific layout, likely me and the content share. If, it was, if there was no content share, you would just see my video feed because I'm the active speaker. But if Jenna started talking and it would, switch over to her video, that's active speaker, and then gallery views at grid view. So you can choose what you want your attendees to see, or if you just want to follow you around as the host, you can have that option selected. Um, this little green icon always indicates who is sharing, and then the video and audio uh, are indicated here by uh, the red slash, meaning that that video is muted. Uh, these audio options are enabled at the moment. So next, polling. So how am I doing these polls? Well, uh, polling is pretty neat. You can actually add a question prior to your webinar or your meeting, or you can create it on the fly if you want to. So I uh, created these polls prior to the meeting, uh, this webinar that we're currently in, which uh, gives me the ability to just launch them rather than have to go and create them in the background. But you could create a poll on the fly if you needed to. So if I click edit, it'll take me up to the web portal and this is where I can build out my test poll. Again, this can be done ahead of time, which is recommended. So you can name your poll so that when it shows up in your polling list, you can see what that looks like. You can allow anonymous polling. Here's what the, is the text that's gonna be presented to uh, your audience. And then here are the answers. And these answers can be single choice or multiple choice if you'd like. Before I launch the poll, I can preview the poll as the host. So here's, here's my poll before I launch it. When I click launch, that's when it's live to you as the participant or as the attendees. So I can see the elapsed time. I can see how many people have voted, what percentage of the total number has voted. And then in the answer section, I can see the percentage of people and how they voted. So this is a really cool way to kind of interact with your audience uh, as we've been doing today 
uh, we've been able to ask some fun passing questions. Um, but this is just a great way to re-engage your audience in a webinar. When I end the poll, I, as the host, will immediately see the results and I can choose to share them with you or not. Now I've been choosing to share them with you because uh, I want this to be kind of interactive, but um, this share results button would give me the ability to do that. If I don't want to share the results, I can again just uh, close out of this window. And then if I didn't get the data I was hoping for, or maybe there were questions about the poll that I had launched, I could relaunch the poll to get a fresh set of data. And then this polling uh, is always reportable after the webinar. Q&A. Uh, Q&A is also down here along this bar. And Q&A is really nice uh, to be able to take a structured question and answer session. So instead of taking live Q&A, uh, we can take Q&A like we're doing today through the Q&A box. This is something that is in the webinar platform that's not in the meeting platform. In the meeting platform, you only have chat. In the webinar platform, you have chat and Q&A. So what you're seeing here uh, are the settings for this particular Q&A session. So allowing anonymous questions can be toggled on or off. These Q&A settings can actually be changed or set up ahead of time so that you don't, you don't need to come out here and set them. Uh, but if on the fly you need to make any changes, you can do so. So here we can see what the, the, this would look like. Now in today's session, I have turned off anonymous questions. I've allowed attendees, you guys, to view answered questions only. So only the questions that Josh and Jenna and Chandler have been answering uh, will be seen by you. And then under all questions, you can see that this is a collaborative effort. So this would be uh, attendees can see every question that's been submitted. And then you can upvote those questions with a thumbs up or attendees can comment. So down here, you can see a thumbs up option. You see that uh, those upvoted questions uh, actually get pulled to the top of the list when you have that option selected. So that's another great way to help uh, people that have the same question vote for that, that great question and, and give that priority in the list. Then you can see that comment here. Notice that when I am going to answer a question as the uh, panelist, all panelists can answer questions and help out. Uh, you actually get the ability to answer it live. So I can say, uh, you know, the answer to the question is, you know, X, Y, Z. Then I click done. After I've clicked done, that'll actually move to the answered pile so that I can know that I've, I've already answered that question. It'll say I've answered it live. Now, if you want to be able to report on the answers that you've provided, uh, it's recommended you type out an answer. That way, when you go to pull the report with the questions, it'll include the typed answers as well. So this is a nice way to uh, be able to report on questions. And if you don't get to all the questions in your webinar, again, you have that report that has all of the questions aggregated for you so that you can send out a follow-up email answering those questions if you'd like. Next up is security. So security has been uh, a focus of Zoom um, uh, since day one, but uh, even more so as of late, as we've had uh, a, a number of uh, folks all across the world using Zoom for um, happy hours, for uh, educational purposes, for, uh, for business meetings, uh, and, and events, all, things of that nature. So security has been uh, a, a very top of mind for us. And we're currently in a 90 day security window where we're only focusing our development on security related items. Uh, so Zoom takes security very seriously and we have dedicated a page to security and privacy at Zoom. So if you're interested in looking for more information, is Zoom safe? Um, I would like to know more about kind of how Zoom protects their platform. What about for healthcare? What about for uh, Zoom for government, we have a, a government platform that is uh, completely separate in the cloud uh, that, that you can sign up for if you're with a government organization. More information can be found at this page at zoom.us slash security. And if you ever have any questions, you can email us to, uh, directly at security at zoom.us. So uh, some, some, some in-meeting security capabilities, uh, this also applies to webinars as well uh, to protect your meetings. Um, encryption, we uh, are actually moving uh, at the end of May, the end of this month, to uh, an AES-256 GCM encryption. So that is a more secure uh, encryption type. Uh, we also have waiting rooms that we talked about earlier. 
we are requiring a host to be present uh, before the meeting starts. Uh, there's a join before host option. This is something that can be convenient, but if you want your meeting to be more secure, not allowing participants to join the meeting before you as the host arrive might be a beneficial option. Um, we can um, expel a participant or all participants if we need to uh, in a meeting. We can report a user now. We can lock a meeting as we, as we showed uh, in the webinar. We have screen sharing watermarks and audio signatures. These are some cool high tech um, options that we provide. The audio signatures are really interesting. Uh, basically puts a little audio code into your audio feed so that uh, you can identify where that audio uh, recording came from. Uh, enabling and disabling uh, participants to record. That's something that has always been available. You can pause your screen share if you need to. Password protecting your meetings uh, and then allowing individuals to uh, with a given email to join. So we can actually limit folks, uh, if you're on a business account, to a certain domain. So if you're uh, you know, with an organization like Zoom and you only want Zoom employees to join that Zoom meeting or that Zoom webinar, you can say only users that are signed in to Zoom with a zoom.us domain can join our meeting. So this is a really, a, a really great way to secure that session further. So lots of, lots of ways to protect your meetings. Um, you know, just as we went over all the, the various features today, we did cover some security items. Um, the newest security item that we've added to the meeting toolbar, excuse me, is the security button. It's a security badge that takes all of the security related features and pulls them to one click away. So click the security button and you have now one, you're one click away from locking your meeting, from turning on or off the waiting room, for preventing people from uh, sh screen sharing in your meeting, from turning off chat, renaming themselves, et cetera. And we've recently added the ability for you to not only remove a participant, but to report a participant if needed. So uh, lots of great security features that are here within Zoom. Zoom is a secure platform that is used by a number of enterprises uh, across the globe. Um, and and uh, we are uh, in fact focused on security and always have been. So Zoom 5.0, what is that? Uh, Zoom 5.0 is our newest version of Zoom. Uh, this is available now on uh, Windows, Mac, iOS devices, Android devices. Uh, so go out to zoom.us slash download to make sure you have the latest and greatest version of Zoom. At the end of this month, we will be requiring all users to be on the 5.0 version of Zoom, which is really important because this is a, uh, a great benchmark for Zoom. We're uh, jumping to this major version uh, to implement that new encryption capability uh, amongst some other cool features. So uh, a sleeker UI, uh, user interface, uh, amongst some other cool neat features. So definitely uh, download this 5.0 version if you haven't already. Uh, and again, that can be done at zoom.com or zoom.us slash download. All right, our last poll of the day. Uh, this is kind of a fun one as well. So uh, do you believe that the historic Auburn House on TU's campus is haunted? So there's that poll. I'm not sure uh, I've ever ventured near the Auburn House in my time at Towson. We have about 77% of the votes in. Looks like most people are, are opting for no uh, or not sure. I, I think I'm also not sure. I don't have any personal experiences with the Auburn House. Great. All right, I'm gonna end the poll here, share those results with you. So again, 54% of you said no, it's not haunted. Seems like most of you are, are realists or just not supernatural. All right, I'll stop sharing here. So we have a little, uh, a little over 10 minutes uh, left in our session. Uh, and with the last part of the session, we're gonna talk about uh, Zoom technical support, um, how that's beneficial to you, and then we will uh, we'll wrap up. So Zoom technical support uh, can be accessed from our support page at support.zoom.us. Uh, this is where we have a wealth of information so we have information about just about anything related to Zoom. So if you have a question about something, this is where you would wanna come first. Uh, this is a great place to, to find information about, like I said, just about anything you want. And this is where I reference a lot of the, the, um, the materials for questions that my customers bring me that I don't know the answers to. The articles are very thorough uh, and you can use the search tool 
to search for something. So for instance, polling. If you type polling in, it'll give you two suggested articles, polling for meetings and polling for webinars, uh, which is kind of great. So you can quickly and easily access those, those articles. And again, those articles are very thorough. They include an overview of what the feature is or what that article is about, prerequisites to using that feature or Im implementing that, 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 uh, that tool. Uh, so what do you need, what version of Zoom do you need to be on? Where does that need to be enabled in your account? Things like that. And then it goes through and, and walks you through how to turn that setting on and then how to use it in your Zoom meeting or webinar. So the search tool is, is pretty invaluable. Um, you could type in something like recording and it would give you similar options. Um, there's also getting started guides. So if you're not sure, uh, you know, you want to just kind of go through like the beginning st steps of learning about webinar or meetings or whatever it might be, the getting started guides are a great place to do that. And we also have very short one minute video introductions. So for those of you who are interested in how to schedule a meeting in Zoom, uh, we didn't cover that today very in, in, in any depth, but um, scheduling a meeting with Zoom uh, is a great video, a one, two minute video tutorial that'll show you and tell you how you can do that. Uh, again, we have a couple of scheduling tools to be able to uh, create meetings in Zoom and add them right to your calendar. Those are very convenient. Down here at the bottom, we have a get help option. So you can find out if uh, there's any issues with Zoom. So our cloud status. So what is the uh, uptime of Zoom? Uh, we have a very good uptime. Zoom has been kind of, Zoom, Zoom has been rock solid through all of the, uh, the COVID-19 influx and all of this, all of the, the uh, you know, the happy hours and events that have been held on Zoom, which has been great. So uh, if you're looking for a steady platform to leverage, to, to be on video, share your screen. Uh, Zoom is, is definitely a good one for that. But this is also where you can find updates about any changes that have been made to Zoom as well. Tutorials and training, and then contacting support. So contacting support uh, can be done three ways, by submitting a request, by chatting, uh, or by calling uh, our support line if you are part of a business account. Live training, uh, so we actually offer live trainings uh, daily, weekly, monthly. These are recurring trainings that we offer. So if you come out to this live training page, uh, you can actually access it from the support page. Um, this live training page will give you um, a couple of offerings. So getting started with Zoom, getting started with meetings, webinars, Zoom rooms, things of that nature. There's also an Ask Me Anything session where you can go and ask anything for 60 minutes. Uh, any questions you have about Zoom in a webinar and, and there'll be those questions will uh, be addressed in that session. So this is a really great way to get more information about Zoom with one of our professional trainers. Um, if, you, if you don't have the time to sign up and register or none of the times work for you, um, there's, a, there's recordings of these webinars as well that you can go and watch. So uh, this, this portal here is a wealth of information uh, and I can't really say enough about it. All right, well that takes us to the end of our session today. Uh, I'm going to pull up uh, the Q&A here on my end. Uh, does anyone have any additional questions? Let's see if anyone has any additional questions. Uh, looks like we have one question there in the, in the portal. Seems like most of those questions have been answered. That is great. Jenna, any, uh, any final words for the, for the group here before we wrap up? Sure, thank you so much, Dane and Josh. Uh, this has been a great session. I've learned a lot myself. And Josh, I am impressed with how quickly you can type some of these answers. He's answered 30 questions, it looks like so far, and done some also some private messaging back to our attendees. So hopefully you all learned a lot today and um, Josh and Dane were able to answer some of your questions. Um, this does conclude our webinar, Zoom Like a Pro. Make sure you follow the TU Alumni Association on our social media channels. You'll see them now in, on your screen. Um, and this session was recorded, like Dane said, we will be posting it and on our social media channels once we have it available. Uh, we hope you can join us for another one of our live events and webinars. You can learn more about those events at alumni.towson.edu slash events. Next Tuesday, we will be hosting a virtual tour of alumni co-owned Vent Coffee Roasters on Facebook Live. Join us at noon to learn more about the coffee roasting process. Thank you, and we hope to see you again next time. Great. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your week.